Hey guys, it's Chef Jason, working today with Rock River Ranches. We've got a fantastic recipe for you today, right? We have found a way to take these beautiful bison cube steaks and kind of turn them into something amazing, right? We've got chicken fried bison is going to be our recipe today. But now, listen, I'm gonna tell you what, this is kind of a threefer, right? Because we're gonna show you the process, but we're gonna give you some other ideas in the recipe uh, at the very end to show you some other ways to do it, right? like bison schnitzel, right? How amazing does that sound? And bison Salisbury steak. So like I said, today we're gonna focus on chicken fried bison. We've got kind of uh, multiple components here, right? We've got the frying component, right? We've gonna, we're gonna do that safely as well. We're gonna make a little chicken gravy, like a cream chicken gravy. We've got the breading and we've got the flour as well. So a fun process, an easy process, but we're gonna walk you through this, give you kind of that beautiful chef's eye view to show you how to do this, but then then don't forget, grab the recipe, follow along, and you too can make some pretty fantastic chicken fried bison steaks. First thing I like to do is let's get this flour knocked out of the mix. So we added the cornstarch, the masa, and the flour all in here. We're gonna mix that up nice. And you can see that cornstarch does a really nice job of aerating uh, and adding some fluff and some cool texture. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and season this up with a little bit of rub-a-dub, right? I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm gonna add about four tablespoons uh, because I don't wanna have too much salt in here, too much salt in the gravy, uh, and too much salt uh, at the end. I wanna just have a nice mix. So. We'll get that all mixed up and that's it right there. Pretty fast and simple, right? Uh, but this flour is definitely a key part of this uh, chicken fried bison steak. Now we've gotta go ahead and make the quote unquote batter. So I added the buttermilk. I've got those four large eggs in there. I'll get those all stirred up. I added a little bit of rub-a-dub as well, uh, just because I wanna make sure I've got seasoning all the way through. But like I said, I'm not going too heavy so that uh, now I just have good flavor all the way through. So we'll get that all mixed up and ready to go. That is it right there. That is the second step. That's gonna be our batter. Time to make the roux. So we've melted one stick of butter and roux is basically uh, a fat and flour. We're using butter today. We're gonna add to that a half a cup of our chicken flour, right? That's got masa, flour, and uh, cornstarch. Now, we're gonna mix this up here nice. And now we're gonna cook this for just a little bit because as you can see, that's pretty pale, right? We wanna toast that flour and the fat just a little bit to add a really nice flavor. So we'll go ahead and cook this for about three to five minutes or until you can start to smell that beautiful nuttiness of that roux. So the gravy part, right? One of the things I do is we'll add the heavy cream, we add the chicken stock, we add a little bit of the uh, bouillon, and I added a tablespoon, but you can add really as much as you want, just depending on how strong you want that. Then we went ahead and seasoned it with some uh, fresh cracked black pepper. Now, here is your gravy tip. Keep the roux warm, right? Because warm roux into warm gravy uh, is so much better. You won't have little roux balls or little dumplings. Now, what I will do is we'll bring this to a simmer. You can see it's already coming to a simmer. And we'll do this this way. I'm gonna add a little bit of roux first, right? I like to add a little bit of roux, let that thicken up, and then um, cook it for a little bit. The gravy is right where I like it. I think we are set as far as thickness goes. You can see we use most of that roux. Now, the only adjustment I think I'll make is probably add just a little bit more pepper because, you know, it's pepper, and I like a nice peppery gravy. So that is it, you guys. Adjust it how you want, but gravy is dialed in. Time to add the cube steaks into our batter, so to speak. So take them out of the package, unfold them, uh, and they are going to go in there just beautifully. Now, I'm gonna let these guys soak for about an hour. I want the eggs and buttermilk to really add some flavor to it and soak in there a little bit, but we'll push those guys down. We're gonna let them sit for an hour and then it will be time to get them into that chicken flour, into the oil, and make some beautiful chicken fried bison steaks. Time to get these guys floured up. We've let them sit for about an hour, right? Those uh, cube steaks sat in that buttermilk and egg mixture for about an hour. We are set to go. So what I'll do, and you can use gloves for this if you want. Um, it's just, there's no clean way to do it. So I figure why, why waste a glove? I'll just use my hands. Let that guy come out a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and pack it in the flour. Now, you could double bread this if you want. You could go back into the milk and back into the flour, but I think you're gonna find this is pretty fantastic as it is. Now, what I'm gonna do is just lightly push on it. I want some of that uh, flour mixture to start to absorb into that cube steak a little bit, right? And get that all set and ready to go. Now, pull that guy out, give it a flip, 
and just push a little bit more in there. My secret, my ultimate chef's tip for this, when you are done, we will take this out of the flour, carefully out of the flour. We're gonna stick it on the plate. Now we're gonna let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes because I want all of that flour to absorb, pull some of that moisture out of the cube steak and get doughy. Uh, once it seals off and gets nice and doughy, we are in for a pretty special uh, surprise. Went ahead and grabbed our thermometer and we checked that oil. We wanted about 350 to 360, right? That's gonna be a good frying temperature. Now, slowly we're gonna add this in, slowly, slowly slowly and i like to do one at a time i'm not looking to uh overfill this pan and have grease splattering all over the place but definitely be careful have a splatter screen or something ready so carefully we'll go ahead and turn that give it a flip we're going to cook this all the way through we want to make sure this is well done so that's why i say you know anywhere from 9 to 15 minutes uh depending on how thick that is but we'll keep going get this all finished up all right we are all done it is time to carefully grab this guy and like I do, I like to drain it just a little bit, and then I'm going onto a paper plate to let it drain the rest of the way. Now, go ahead and let that oil cool, get it all set and ready to go. That is fantastic. I'll see you back here. We're gonna pile this bad boy on top of mashed potatoes, finish it with a little gravy, and dig in. All right, we've got some mashed potatoes as our base. We'll go ahead and add that chicken fried bison steak. Oh, man. Give our gravy a good stir. You guys, we are set to go. I like to do a little bit of gravy over the top, and then I'll serve a little bit of gravy on the side too. Why? Because it's gravy. Then a little bit of garnish on the top. We are set and ready to go. That right there is absolute chicken fried bison steak. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Cube steak, right? Now turned into bison chicken fried steak, which is absolutely fantastic. Now. You can see we've got some other stuff working here, right? Tell you what, we're gonna show you at the end of this video a couple finished photos of some other dish ideas, right? We've got that Salisbury steak getting ready, we've got some mushrooms going, and we're gonna show you that bison schnitzel. So three really cool recipes that come out of one amazing cube steak. So. There you have it. I'm Chef Jason for Rock River Ranches. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Be sure to download today's recipe. Head over to the website. You can grab that recipe and you can click print and follow along. Happy cooking and we'll see you soon.